Allora, ragazzi, abbiamo... Mi sentite, sì. E vi chiedo... Io dobbiamo portare adesso gli economisti... No, we have to take uh, the five economists back to the hotel because uh, tonight uh, there is going to be a boxing match. <laughs> so it's truly important, and let me repeat it, that uh, tonight uh, you get provided with uh, the instruments you need to be able to reply to all those arrogant, uh, mm, those arrogant people who over the next few months, mm, weeks or whatever will tell you you are ignorant, what do you think you can do, who do you think you are. But now now I would like to ask you to bear with us for another 15 minutes. We really cannot uh, uh, go beyond 15 minutes, but uh, Niro Galloni is here with us, uh, and he was uh, truly an insider in the history of Italian debt. He was Director General at the Ministry of Treasure uh, at the times of Andreatta, and he saw what Andreatta did to the Italian debt, and he's going to tell us in 15 minutes, uh, Niro Galloni. Now, let me slightly correct uh, what uh, Paul or Paolo said. However, within uh, the 15 minutes uh, allotted, uh, let me share with you my experience. Uh, I think it is uh, important uh, to convey, even though some of you might have read about it in my books and in my publications. However, I think it is important to share with you today. I've first read it in the past that I studied 40 to 35 years ago, and it was normal to hear from the MMT era post keynesism era Caldor era rapporto Redcliffe Redcliffe all those things that made it possible to govern an economy in a relatively balanced way to have it grow then in the 1980s and 90s the currency and the currency policies had disappeared from Italian universities you couldn't speak about currencies it was forbidden it was just a no-go area. After my university degree in Rome I w and uh, after my research in uh, Berkeley, I started working as uh, a state employee. At the time, we had a Ministry for Budget and Economic Planning, which is now part of the uh, Ministry for Economics. And I also worked together with uh, Federico Carfe. Basically, what happened uh, is uh, we started receiving employees uh, from the International Monetary Fund who were replacing some of us, uh, earning incomes that were totally different from ours. However, they did not know more than we did. We had studied, we had passed the competitive exams, and here is when the first frictions emerged. To make a very long story short, I... Uh, hypothesized that what would have happened by separating the Treasury from uh, the Bank of Italy, which, if you like, is the pillar, the linchpin of everything we are saying here, where the state is not issuing its own currency but is bound by its uh, connection with the banks uh, that have uh, to buy its uh, bonds at very low interest rates, which is more or less the same thing as issuing currency. It's, there isn't a huge difference. Uh, but instead, what happened is that the state state relinquished this ability and decided to go directly on the market. And in fact, it's not the market. It's four, five, six large banks, uh, pre previously public banks, uh, in the process of being privatized, uh, which use and used uh, an even more dramatic method to make sure that interest rates uh, went constantly high, uh, um, went co constantly up, skyrocketing. When we were thinking in liras, uh, the, if the state asked for uh, 5 billion liras, uh, they would buy 4.5 at uh, the going daily rate. Uh, and to sell the last of five, uh, 500 million, uh, they pushed uh, the interest rates up. Um, I made my calculations and came to my conclusions, uh, uh, which were the object of a report I submitted to the minister. Basically, I wrote that uh, with that system, in six to seven years, public debt would have doubled and exceeded the GDP. And second, that we would have deprived an, ent an entire 
entire generation of young people with youth unemployment reaching 50% over the same lapse of time because the high interest rates would have shortened the time span of corporate investment leading corporations not to hire employees, etc. They told me I was mad because public debt could never exceed GDP, otherwise the system would fail. And I told them that if debt was a stock and the GDP was a flow, that was uh, not a consideration uh, that uh, stood. And then uh, they told me that it was impossible for youth unemployment uh, to skyrocket that much. Indeed, uh, that some uh, flexibility measures would have been adopted to allow young people to find an employment. The disagreement increased and increased, and uh, I had uh, to leave uh, the public administration. I decided to leave. I went back to the United States in Houston, and then I mm, traveled in Italy as well. I worked in Italy. And uh, um, once, uh, when I was here, I was attending some workshops and meetings uh, organized uh, by Mr. Donat Katten, who published uh, my papers uh, in uh, his uh, publication my papers on monetary issues. And Norma Rangeri, then journalist at Manifesto, wrote an article on myself saying that since public debt had, incre had overcome GDP that year and youth unemployment in Italy was a world record of 56%, there was a staff, a member of staff at the ministry who had told that that would happen and instead of being paid heed to, he was forced to go. This caused uh, a lot of media hype, and uh, Giulio Andreotti, uh, who was uh, asked uh, to set up a government, wrote to me, Mr. Galloni, would you like to work with me to try and save the economy of this country? And of course, I enthusiastically accepted. Uh, I worked uh, together with his uh, closest uh, collaborator, who asked me, what should I do to change the economy of this country? And he said it with a very thick southern accent, so you probably know what Italian minister that was. However, let me come to the end of my short presentation. He told me, ask for the Ministry of Budget for the next government and put me as head of the structure and I will take care of everything. And that was the case. He called me, he told me, uh, I'm the Minister of Budget, so I started working with him. He made me head of the uh, ministerial structure and of a group of 25 university professors. And we started to start working on uh, the multi-annual economic uh, planning document. The end goal of this action of mine was uh, to slow down the process uh, that would have uh, brought us to the euro, not because we didn't want that to happen, but because uh, we wanted it to occur in a different time frame to allow Italy to get used uh, to a new industrial context, uh, because that would have made the difference uh, between uh, creating good employments or losing employment. After a few weeks of working on this project, uh, a huge catastrophe uh, ensued. Uh, found, uh, the Agnelli Foundation, uh, the Business uh, Confederation in Italy called the then Minister of Treasury, Guido Carli. He received a telephone call by Helmut Kohl, nothing less. Uh, if I was uh, uh, chairing the structure, but I felt like I was uh, a small person, a scholar, of course, someone who had things to say, but uh, uh, basically an employee. And re uh, the fact that uh, uh, Helmut Kohl made a telephone call to, co to talk about me, as uh, Cirino Pomicino confirmed to me, um, led me to realize that it was uh, too late for this attempt. And I wrote on a small piece of paper, because he told me not to talk because there were bugs in the room. And I wrote to him, did you receive a telephone call because this and this, and it is not possible to do that? And he nodded and immediately broke the paper and threw it away. So Carlo Donat Catten then called me to act as director general at the Ministry of Labor. And there I started another experience I will have to briefly mention because it is related to today's topics. Before 
Before doing that, however, let me highlight a, a couple of elements which are a bit more than anecdotal. I had been uh, entrusted by part of the Christian Democratic Party and part of, to take contact uh, with parts of uh, the Communist uh, Party to see whether it was possible to pursue an economic and monetary policy different from the one accepted by the establishment within the Christian Democrats, uh, the political left, uh, whereas uh, the social uh, left uh, of Donat Katen was uh, against uh, this uh, separation between uh, the Treasury and uh, the Ministry, etc. So uh, we held workshops. Uh, we had organized the previous uh, workshops uh, with another magazine called Itinerari, uh, which invited uh, uh, people to mm, d see what we were discussing. One of them were Mario Draghi, another one was Giulio Tremonti, so uh, nice persons uh, who then made a big career. So what happened when I got in contact with Azzolini? Well, Carlo, Carlo Azzeglio Ciampi called Berlinguer and said that uh, had we pursued along that road, had we talked about uh, currency or the children of uh, the communists uh, who were in the study departments of banks uh, would have been sent home. Uh, I don't think this calls for a round of applause. It really makes me cry. Um, and there is another thing that I would like to point out. Yeah, very shortly. I'm almost done. When I arrived at the Ministry uh, for Budget, I also studied the Italian society. And in one of my papers, uh, I detected uh, uh, the role of uh, the invalidity pensions uh, uh, that were sort of handouts, uh, free for all. And uh, I reported that. Uh, I was called by someone at a very high level telling me, don't overdo it. We have to fight against the terrorism. If we don't break the cartel of unemployment in southern Italy, there is a possible alliance between the Red Brigades in the north and the unemployed in the south. And I said, OK, that seems a rightful uh, um, argument. Three years after, uh, the Treasury and the Bank of Italy were separated. The uh, public bonds were offered directly on the market to finance public expenditure, expenditure for the unemployed, for the validity uh, pensions are financed as if they were good investments uh, with 20% interest rate. This is what uh, pumped our public debt up. On the one hand, our uh, politicians told us we had to separate uh, the power of politicians from public investments, uh, in fact, to weaken the country. And then they wanted to finance uh, um, that sort of welfare at very high interest rates, uh, uh, creating the public debt bubble. And that is where it all originated. I have a lot of things to say about the problems I have tried to fight against at the Ministry of Labor, against the confusion between the flexibility of labor, which was necessary, and the precarious nature of work that has been a true problem for us. And remind very briefly that, unfortunately, until the 1990s, directors general could take ministers and put them in a corner in the interest of the country after which we were marginalized and we became servants. So rather than state employees, we became government employees. And that is another movie. Now, to sum up, because I think it is important to, to remind you of the following, I have written a book titled Who Betrayed the Italian Economy? That was just published. I have brought a copy for our guests. However, I have come to the conclusion that uh, Mr. Moro's uh, um, kidnapping and killing is yet another attempt to weaken Italy, because both Buffy and uh, his entire school uh, uh, wanted Italia to be in Europe, but uh, with uh, an appropriate time frame, uh, with appropriate procedures. So Italy, that manufactured with its industry, with its uh, state participations, uh, with alternative models, uh, was scary and was very inconvenient, both for the French and for the Germans. Thank you.